All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another glorious siege battle in Total War Rome 2. We've got a fun 2v2 here at Carthage, and we've got some pretty uh, unique factions today. We have Massacely over here. Or, yeah, Massacely. I, I always mix up Massacely and Massilia. This is Massacely. They are also called Desert Rome because they're like a pseudo Roman faction uh, that have desert cohort, which aren't as good as your typical Roman cohort, but they are close. Uh, so, a lot of people like to play them as, you know, kind of like a Roman replacement sort of faction. Then you have Saba over here, which Saba has some pretty good mercenary axe units. Uh, so, they got the Royal Guard, which is a really solid spear unit uh and they also got some camels oh yeah camel spotting ladies and gentlemen camels spotted uh so defending the great city of carthage we have pontus and we have egypt uh, and oof, walls are already falling down as Saba is using their artillery. Just get a little tactical view here of the city here. Now here's the here's the question. This is actually the qu well What's the question you ask? Well, the question is where is the defenders going to hold? This is actually a pretty good spot to hold. The fact that they're both attacking here is is a is a good sign that they could easily just hold right here. It's hard when it's a 2v2 because you don't want to spread out too much, but I think maybe having some troops over on this side would have helped a little bit. But maybe not. I'm not really sure. You know, I don't really do 2v2s too often. Uh, so, you know, obviously when there's less players, you have to really count on yourself and your teammate right next to you than, say, if it's a 4v4 where there's a lot of troops and a lot of stuff going on where you can kind of support here and there. But there's definitely more more weight that you have to, that you're burdened with when it's a 2v2. Anyways, uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's see what's going on here. We've got uh, Miss Aisley sending up uh, their desert cohort we have the desert legionaries moving in as well and then over on this far side we have more desert legionaries so cohort legionaries looking pretty awesome we got some pontic swordsmen ready to defend the wall so it's good to see that the defenders are using the walls here a little bit to try to defend against this attack so here comes the desert legionaries they're pushing in and they are trying to take out these pontic swordsmen uh, which I don't think the Pontic Swords will hold for too long because they are getting surrounded by two units, uh, one on each side of Desert Legionaries. So there you have it, guys. But it, like I said, it's good to see that the defenders are putting up somewhat of a defense here. I just... Okay, well, hold on. Hold that thought. We do have a flank here. A little bit of a far push by Saba. They're kind of pushing out, and uh, they're going to attack this long wall. That's good. They're going to try to attack as many different areas as possible. One thing to note, though, is that you really need to pay attention to the um, stairs. Oh, hold on. Hold that thought. Huge sally out. What in the world? Huge sally out by Egypt. This actually might work here. This is crazy. So they've got one, two, three, four, five units of Thorax Swordsmen. They are going to push and try to get the Siege Towers by surprise. And let's see if they can pull it off. Now, there are three. Ooh, this is going to be... This is nasty. We got Camel Cataphracts moving in. So he does have Cav support that are going to, you know, obviously make their way over uh, to, uh, you know, aid their infantry. But will they get there in time? Uh, I mean, this is a good sally out, but they're kind of missing their opportunities here. I don't know why he didn't go for an attack there, because when you attack the troops climbing up a siege tower, they instantly come down from the siege tower. Instead, they're going to form a, uh, a form a line with their Thorax swordsmen. They have one unit of cav to support uh, from Pontus, but they don't have any archers. They don't have really anything else. So I think this is going to be a losing fight for Egypt. But that was a, um, a really interesting sally out. We'll see how, again, we'll see how it plays out. But meanwhile, Pontus is still holding the fort with his Pontic infantry. Now taking on Desert Levy, and he's still holding on this side of the wall with his one unit of Pontic swords. So they're putting up a good fight. Double time. 
And then back over here, it looks like Egypt is falling back. So, yeah, they didn't like... Yeah, the, I mean... It, it sucks because I was hoping they would get something off here. I was hoping they would pull something off. Uh, but unfortunately, I think they were just a little too late. And now they're... Tr Ooh, they might get trampled here. See, like, sallying out is so risky. Oh, and even artillery is harassing them. Hold on, maybe they can... Maybe they can kind of turn it here. Because the attackers are getting a little desperate as they are sending in their camels to try to kill this infantry. But they are close to these arrow towers. And also on the arrow towers, we have some uh, some bowmen who are opening fire. And the, ooh, the artillery getting friendly fire there. What's the point? Just hold fire. Look at that. Look at that, guys. They're actually doing this. So they are getting chased right now by this desert cohort. They fling a volley into the backs, but it's not really... Well, they killed a good amount, but it's not too devastating. And the infantry is able to recover. Oh my god, that could have been way worse. That artillery, if it landed just right, it could have killed so many of these Thorax swordsmen. Uh, but they're going to go ahead and retreat back into the city as the enemy pursues them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was... It wasn't... Obviously, they were able to save their infantry before they got, you know, ran down, but it could have been worse. I think the fact that the attackers got so greedy here and chased them down over to their walls, it kind of worked out. And, they, and they're still capitalizing on the situation because now they're just like shooting all this infantry that's out in the open. And their backs are going to be turned to the archers, so they're going to be pretty vulnerable to the archer fire. A desert cohort. Yeah, they're falling back. All right, and then back over on this side, Pontus is still holding the breach. Now, they are just taking on Desert Levy, so it's no surprise there. The Pontic infantry is bashing them, crushing them. Meanwhile, there is a literal dam that is about to break here, guys. We have so many units of desert cohort and legionaries ready to storm the city and this is what makes this wall so good for the defenders look at this look how much wall space there is you see this but there's only two stairs there's only two stairs right here and here so it's easy to hold them back unfortunately though there's nothing holding them back now they've broken that pontus sword unit they're pouring down into the city streets and they're going to get ready for their next attack. Um, and then Pontus over here is still holding this upper wall. Uh, they got one unit of infantry. This is actually a pretty good play uh, because they're going to have the arrow towers here kind of supporting them. Just putting down suppressing fire and just, you know, getting some good kills with those fire arrows. I mean, honestly, guys, you don't know how important the siege tower or the uh, the wall towers are. The, you know, defensive towers. They're very important and they can do a lot of damage. If you use them strategically. Now, very good play by Masasali. As they shift their troops around, they're going to easily get behind Pontus. Pontus needs to call it quits here. What does he got? He's got Peltus? Pontic Peltus. I assume they used up all their ammo. They're now in the front line. And they are holding off Saba. Saba Daba. All right, so uh is just kind of setting up here. And yeah, you know, it's probably for the best that the defenders kind of fall back to the inner defenses of the city. Uh, they are shifting up some Thorax swords over to the center position. I'm not really... I don't really know why. The only thing I can think... Here's the, here's the one thing about... Car the, well, the one bad thing about Carthage from the defensive side, right? When you're holding this outer area, uh, it's very good. Carthage overall is a fairly, uh, fairly easy settlement. It's a, it's just a really good settlement in terms of balance between between the two, uh, you know, attacking and defending. Because there's a lot of opportunity for both sides to prevail in this uh, this map. Anyways. Uh, what I was saying is they're probably moving up troops here because of this cliff right here. If the attackers take this cliff, it's going to give them a nice vantage point with their archers, and it's just going to be devastating. But uh, back over here, it looks like Egypt did not like what he saw. I don't know if he was trying to 
if he was trying to flank around and get behind Masesali over here. Uh, but instead, he's going to fall back, which is probably the best decision uh, that he could make here. Uh, the only... The only like I said, the only bad thing is that they left this undefended, so the attackers could u easily use this cliff and use archers to fire down. And it's really, it's a really good spot too because people often like to hold. Oh my God! There was a fight over here. Hold on. What? Basically, I wonder if he had troops over here. He might have. I think that's what happened. <laughs> He has a bunch of... Oh, yeah. He's got a bunch of tribesmen here. I completely missed that. Oh, nice cab charge with the general. The Pontic Royal Cav. They're going to do uh, easy work against these guys. Uh, we still have a unit over here. But, you know, honestly, he should have waited. He should have waited. Uh, charging in early like this. I mean, it's just going to be so e Like, the defenders are just going to focus you down. And now we have the Egyptian general uh, making his way. It's an infantry unit, so they're not as fast, obviously. Uh, but he's making his way to try to help deal with this infantry. And Pontus better get that charge bonus off. No, they're just sitting there. The shock cab is really good with charges, obviously. Uh, so he kind of misses an opportunity, but I don't think it's a big deal. He just might lose a couple bodyguard more than he should have. Uh, but yeah, I think he should have waited with those troops if they were over here until he was attacking the main center area. Like once his infantry was like pushing here and here and maybe over here, then you send in these vanguard troops because they will uh, be a huge burden on the defenders when they're already struggling to, you know, hold these different points. Uh, let's go ahead and see what's happening. Oh, okay. I was wrong. All right, the defenders are holding on to this uh, very strategic location in Carthage. They are holding on to this side, which is fantastic. Uh, they've got a lot of hoplites over here. That's actually really good. I remember someone asked me a question about hoplites. They're like, you know, should I get hoplites or just pikemen? Uh, because, you know, I just feel like there's no use to, to hoplites. Well, I think hoplites are so good because they can hold points so well they do have if you get them in the right place at the right time they can potentially get a lot of kills but they are so good i don't know what he's doing with this hoplites here why is he falling back is he getting flanked oh i see there's cav i guess he's worried about the cav uh, but the hoplites are so good at holding strategic points. Unfortunately, though, with him constantly running like this, they're getting stabbed in the back, and he lost way more than he should have. Honestly, it probably would have been better if he just held his ground here instead of falling back. But he does have some peltas, Pontic peltas, helping him out now against these um, desert cohort. So, a really good stand right there. But let's see how long it will last because Masesali is shifting over their desert legionaries. And they are going to try to get a good charge here. And this could be pretty devastating. This is a huge loss for the defenders. This is not what you want to happen when you're defending. you got to make sure you have all your flanks secured. Here they come. Or not... Oh, he's going for the archers, but these are Peltis. It's not going to be that easy to run them down. The Peltis do not... Oh! The Peltis must be out of ammo. See, I wouldn't have done that. Personally, I would have gone for the infantry. I'm not too worried about these Peltis who don't have any ammo. I would want to kill the Hoplite as quick as possible. But it's not a big deal. I mean, either way, it's still pretty effective. And whoa! Whoa! Pontus is falling back. I saw some infantry there right before they disappeared. They are falling back. Uh, it looks like Pontus is breaking here anyways. Masesli charging forward some desert cohort. And over on this side, the fighting is getting intense. Egypt is trying to hold the line here against Masesli and Saba. Saba, we're, honestly, this has kind of been the Masesli show. It's finally good to see a lot of troops from Saba get pulled into the fight.
They're surrounding these uh, Royal Peltis, which is a really good unit. The Royal Peltis, this is really bad right here. Uh, these Royal Peltis are very expensive. They're very good for their price. I mean, like... I mean, they're they're like a high tier unit. The fact that they only have 54 kills is a huge, huge loss. You want your Royal Peltis to be like 200 kills, 300 kills. You really want them high up there. And the fact that Egypt is kind of missing that opportunity. He's down to 29 Royal Peltis. They have 67 troops uh, left in the unit. So it looks like it's going to be disaster back over here rome is holding this front against the desert cohort galatian royal guard holding their ground so this is these are some definitely high tier really good units they are up there in skill so this is going to be a tough tough location for the attackers to break through but let's see if they can pull it off they are just pouring in more and more troops this is becoming quite an unorganized fight over on this front but really what's most important to this battle is the situation up here how is this going to play out are they going to send archers over here they should be sending archers over right now i don't even know why he has archers over on this side just put them right here they should be able to get an angle on those troops defending this choke point here and this is a this is a really solid place to defend uh in this settlement why did they wait 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 why is he retreating his men why is he running like this egypt has been making some questionable moves and i don't understand the logic behind them i don't understand why he would not hold this point right here with these units maybe he just was stacking too much but i mean like at least have one or two reinforcing these hoplites and you will hold for so long but instead he's falling back what that tells me is that they are more concerned about mesaisley flanking around than saba attacking them head on that's the only thing i can think of why he would uh maneuver so many troops from that front line all right, we got the Desert Legionary Cav just kind of scouting up ahead, looking for an opportunity. We've got some pikes here, but uh, these pikes, is if if the attackers don't have ammo, then they're golden. You know, nothing's going to hurt them. But I have a feeling, considering how fast the initial start of the siege battle was, that those pikemen are going to get chewed up by archers. But, you know, as I look at these forces, I don't really see... A lot of archers i don't really see a lot of archers so i don't know maybe the pikes will do just fine but this is a problem right here and i wish egypt left behind one or two units to help out these hoplites because like i said you can rack up a lot of kills here you can get you can delay the enemy you can cause the enemy to send troops into the meat grinder where they're going to lose a lot of men because he had galatian royal guard those are some really solid units and i think he's just missing an opportunity here these hoplites are not doing so hot they're running out of troops they're down to 73 they have 14 kills oh they need help this is a this is another dam that is about to break and saba is the ocean it's gonna flood in but yeah no they just they're just falling back they're they have done see i don't understand that though i just don't get the reasoning behind that because you have to now hold one two three three choke points right here four uh, you know five so five choke points where you could have just held one <laughs> right there now i understand i understand the attackers are pushing a huge calf force down this pathway but you know you could have sent a unit here or you could just kind of deal with the cap as long as you have something protecting the back of this force you would have been fine because everything else is plugged you know everything's out it's not cav has a hard time in settlements you know because they don't do well in choke point situations they need space they need to be able to maneuver and flank and get rear charges but it's hard to do that in a settlement so don't be too worried about the cav running through here because you'll just plug the gaps and you'll be okay um but no the hoplites have fallen 
and now they're gonna have a much more challenging situation and here comes the archer horde that is going for the vantage point the strategic vantage point in Carthage uh, this is why it's so important that, that you know it's so disadvantage like there's such a big disadvantage for the uh, defenders in this area of the settlement that most of the time when you see these battles at Carthage the defenders defend with everything they have on these outer walls because honestly defending this area is easier than defending this area when you're surrounded by cliffs it's just a very very ch uh, difficult and challenging situation so uh, now they just kind of wait all right guys they are now pushing the attackers are now pushing into the final stand you have pontic swordsmen who are going to make their stand right here and Masesli, Saba, throwing everything they have into this front line. And then back over here, we have all the pikemen. We have uh, Hellenic, Hellenic Royal Guard and another unit of Hellenic Royal Guard. Uh, so, I assume they're going to try to use Javis here. I'm not really sure or they're just they're just staying here and what they're gonna do is just make the the hop or the pikeman honest make him so they can't retreat if they retreat they'll get chased down by the desert cohort but as long as they stand their ground uh, there's nothing these guys can do uh oh 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 they're they're punching a hole through this defense they've got a lot of infantry with uh, skirmishing projectile wait Oh, there he goes. And then he's going to hold them. Watch. Hold. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're down to 59. That's a problem. That's a big time problem. So they might have to send over help, which they are royal. Uh, not royal. Pontic Peltis are making their way to kind of reinforce here. They got to. They need to send more bodies over this way to kind of take some of that skirmish ammo. Back over here, this is a ticking time bomb. I don't think they're going to be able to hold with just what they have. They need more. They need to send up reinforcements. So we'll see if, uh, if they'll do that soon. I mean, the Pontus might be able to hold here for a little bit, but there's so many reserves just waiting for their turn to charge in that Pontus, you know, they, they need, they're going to need more troops to win this one. I mean, you know, looking at this defense, I think there is a possibility. The bounce of power is in favor of the attackers, but only just slightly, only ever so slightly. So I think there's a huge possibility of them winning this. It's it's definitely possible. All right, then we got camel cataphracts making their way. They're pushing forward. This is the general, so don't expect much from this unit. Probably just going up there for moral support, using general abilities and whatnot. Uh, back over on this side, we've got um, camel cataphracts again. See the calves not the calf is useless. That is why you usually don't see so much cav in siege battles because once you're in the city, cav can't really do much because it's so easy to plug these gaps. Oh, here's the Galatian Royal Guard. They have been shifted over to where the pikes were and now finally we have another choke point that is in full on war right now as uh, we've got some noble infantry. Oh, did he dismount some cav? It's mostly desert cohort, but... So, some pretty ferocious fighting here. Pontus and Egypt doing everything they can to hold, but this is... This is tough because... 
see how the see how they're abandoning choke points this is exactly and i think that's what the attackers are doing here i think that's their strategy what they're trying to do is just play the the weight game they've got plenty of time i think it's only been like 20 minutes in these battles usually people put an hour timer so they have plenty of time they've got like 40 minutes maybe uh to or maybe like 35 whatever but what they're hoping to do is this right here look at this they are hoping that when they put pressure on these different choke points they're gonna have to peel troops away from other choke points that they're holding so if you notice they moved a unit away from here and put them in this fight and they had to move up a general as soon as there's a breach in the line or a gap in the defense this cav that they have just waiting here like vultures it's like um you know it's funny i have i have pot belly pigs and uh one's pretty small still the pretty young like uh, i think less than a year almost a year old uh but they grow pretty slow compared to like a dog uh what's funny is that there's vultures that wait because vultures obviously they're known for eating dead things but they will also attack uh, dying livestock or really young livestock uh, so they just kind of hang out and watch uh, and that's kind of what this cab is doing right now they are the uh, black vultures that are just waiting for any slight any single weakness they can find and they are going to swoop in and capitalize on it so that's what they're doing right now and by the way uh my little pig elvis he's fine he doesn't get attacked by the vultures i think the vultures just kind of check him out and they leave uh because i actually have two pot belly pigs where one is full grown she's like four or five so she's really big so uh she kind of protects the little one so it's it's it, do not worry for my pig the vultures will not harm elvis uh and elvis is getting bigger every single day so anyways i don't know i just wanted to make that analogy i guess <laughs> All right, Thorax Swords, Desert Cohort, putting up a good fight. Now we're starting to see some archers, Sabian archers. Um, so that tells me they're starting to run out of troops. That is, that's a good sign for the uh, the defenders. They just got to make sure they just can hold on a little bit longer. See, it's really these battles are battles of inches or centimeters, you know, whatever, whatever unit of measurement you you use. Uh, they're battle of small gains over a long period of time, you know, just like anything in life. Whether you want to be an expert at doing something, you do it every day and you gain small little gains until like a couple years you are an expert. Anyways. Um, you know if we kind of look back and think about how this battle played out egypt made some questionable moves here in this one that i think if they didn't make they would be in a little bit better of a situation uh, kind of how they sallied out i don't think they really won in that it wasn't it wasn't like end of the world for egypt when they sallied out nothing happened but they did lose troops unnecessarily now they also got some kills but i feel like they lost more than they killed uh so egypt you know also when egypt like charged forward here and then fell back or when egypt gave up this position here i just think those are small little mistakes that really built up over time but you know guys this, this is not over i'm not i'm not saying egypt made so many mistakes that the battle is over they can still win this the only problem is this side is looking rough they need to send up more and they are we've got the um hellenic 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 royal guard moving forward they are getting blasted with arrows right now but a lot of the arrows are missing it's kind of an awkward angle for the archers of saba and it looks like they just ran out of ammo except for this one the other unit ran out of ammo i think they're fine one unit shooting at you that's fine don't worry about it hold your ground let's see how many they've got 108 in here okay this is really good they can rack up a lot of kills as long as they don't move them around too much maybe send this unit of thorax swordsmen in the mix with the pikemen uh some people call that an exploit but literally everyone does it you know it's when you stack the pikes 
Here's another cataphract, cataphract charge, but they're charging into hoplites. It's a tough, tough situation. It's a tough situation for these. Now the vultures are getting desperate. You know, they're like, oh, come on, get sick or die or something. Uh, over on this side, um, this was looking a little bad for the defenders, but they've sent over some pikemen and it's doing wonders. Now we have a general keeping their morale high. We got a thorax or royal thorax swordsman, so they're better than the standard thorax swordsman. But there's still three units of royal guard from Saba that are eager to charge. We got the general in the back there still alive. This is a close battle, guys. This is coming down to the wire. Uh, you know, and honestly, as I look, yeah, I, I don't know. I think the defenders can actually win this one. I think they got this. As long as they don't have a disastrous situation, like one of their generals died, it causes a mass break. I think they can win this. I don't think the attackers have the tools to defeat this pike defense. They ran out of archers, or they ran out of ammo with the archers. They're running out of projectiles. It's not looking good. Uh, so we'll see if they can kind of win this and hold this. The cav is like is like probing here and there. They okay. The charging is working against these hoplites. And if okay, I will say this: if. If the cav breaks through here, it is over for the defenders. The, the cav is so desperate, so very desperate to break through here that if they do, because they know, they know if they break through here, they are going to win. They are going to win this battle. Back over here, still another glorious defense. Uh, we have the Royal Guard. This is the this is the next big question. Can this force right here hold against this Royal Guard? They have the general nearby. He's pushing up and he's gonna go ahead and join the fight. This is it. When a general charges in like this, you know this is the final stand. This is it. They have nothing more. This is where they put up their defense. Now, they could try to win on a different flank, you know, over here and then shift troops over, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. There's still a lot of troops over on this side. But, you know, as I look over here, there's nothing Masesali can do. I mean, I don't like what Egypt's doing here. They pushed up some royal guard. Why? Uh, and Masesali's not really capitalizing on it. That's like the word of the day. Anyways, they could have, like, flanked around and gotten behind them. I guess they were worried about the pikes moving up. Uh, I'm not really sure. But Masesali is going to go in and... Yeah, they're just giving it everything they got. And they're just glad they're not fighting pikemen. There we go. There's a nice little flank. There we go. And then they're going to get out of there because they're worried about the pikes. Oh, this is actually pretty big. What is he doing? The pikes are going up unsupported. And there's a gap. There's a gap right here. As soon as they defeat this Thorax Swordsman unit, if they can defeat him. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. This unit saved the day. This Thorax Sword unit prevented any kind of flanking. So, good on him with that. Oh, no! The Hoplites are breaking here. The Camel Cataphracts are pretty much left to fight the Royal Cav of Pontus. Like, like, listen, bodyguard, my companions, we hold the flank. This is it. If we die, our army dies. You know, here, here's the epic engagement. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. They like, they barely put up a fight. Oh my God. They know they're in big trouble. They're now peeling a unit of pikes away. Why didn't they do that earlier? I guess they were worried about the calves sneaking through here. But the cav has now broken through. Masesli! Oh, they ran through a gap right here. Oh, they... Oh, dude. This defense was light. Oh, my God. Oh, that's game. That's game. What a fight. It literally came down to cav breaking through. And the attackers do it by the... Just barely. Because they're running out of infantry. They're running out of infantry, but you know what? I mean, as I see this and I see Egypt starting to spread around troops and this isn't looking good. 
I, I think, yeah, I think the attackers, I, even if they didn't get the cab through, I think they still could have, it would have been a little closer, but this is still a great battle, and it does come down to the cab running through the, uh, the little, you know, gaps in the line, getting behind the defenders, and, and see, and that's why you should bring some cab, just not a lot, like one or two units of cab, maybe if you're like a cab faction, maybe bring three, but yeah. Uh, because you can still use them. That's the great thing about cab. They're fast and they can uh, get around quickly to weaker spots in the defense. Um, but yeah, uh, don't go overboard with the cab because most of the time it's hard to get anything done with these cab units. So there you have it, guys. We'll go ahead and uh, fast forward because all that we have left here is just a couple uh, troops just kind of scattered here and there uh, not really doing much and there you have it we got 30 seconds left in this battle will be over he's got one more unit but they're about to get trampled by cataphracts uh, not horse cataphracts but camel cataphracts let's go ahead and look at the results here so this was sent in by gamma gamma Gamakis, Gam Gamakis. I'm so sorry, I'm butchering your name. But thank you for the battle replay. He sent it through my Discord, guys. So if, if you look down in the video description, if you're not in my Discord, go ahead and join it. Uh, it's a it's a fun community, and uh, people post their replays all the time, and it helps out the channel a huge amount. Uh, but yeah, really good game by all players. Look at it, pretty equal. Two more kills. Saba got two more kills than his ally. <laughs> wow, it's pretty close. Uh, over here, uh, it looks like Egypt kind of struggled. I think Egypt could have gotten way more kills if he just held that one choke point I was talking about earlier. He went with a very small army. Uh, now that I look at it, very so that puts more pressure on you. When you have a small small army, you have to really get a lot of kills with each unit, and that just didn't happen. You got 15 with this thorax, 36 with this one, uh, 36 with this Galatian royal guard. That is. That's criminal. That's just not enough. His hoplites or his his royal guard, his Hellenic royal guard, not doing this one's okay, 95 kills, but this 58, not enough with pikemen. And then his royal peltis, just 74 is not enough. You know, this 156 a little bit better, but anyways, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, in this great battle. This was a lot of fun, and I will see you in the next one. So thank you, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.